Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, Hoover, Shields, Destiny, Stars, Peasants, Vassals, Zionists. I'm a useful idiot, and today I want to talk about the fact that on December 4th, the United Nations General Assembly, with a vote of 174 to 6, virtually unanimous, called on Israel to join the international community and to immediately join the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, called on Israel to immediately open its nuclear programs for inspection, and called for a high-level conference to ban nuclear weapons from the Middle East. This, uh, this conference was supposed to happen in Helsinki in the middle of this month. So this is, this is unprecedented. This means the, the uh, international community has now turned, and popular opinion has turned against the Israeli state because of their policies, their outrageous policies. And um, this is a pretty interesting. So we have all 174 nations, six abstentions. And the uh, six nations, of course, that voted against this are the United States, Israel, and the Marshall Islands, Micronesia, and Palau. Amazing. So those nations are the ones who voted against having Israel live up to the same terms um, that all the other nations of the world have to live up to. And I also found it interesting that, uh, isn't it funny that the Marshall Islands, Micronesia, and Palau all have voting rights in the United Nations, and as of yet, Palestine doesn't. A little interesting fact there. But, uh, so anyway, and now the United States has already canceled the conference that was going to be held in Helsinki to ban nuclear weapons from the Middle East. So, uh, the U.S. is uh, really showing a, a lack of judgment here in, this, in our relationship with Israel, and this this continues. But uh, I want to get to uh, a little bit of history because I, I always like to bring that to the table and um, show that these uh, these narratives are far more complex than they seem if you're only dealing with uh, the details from the last few years or the last few decades. Because it, as it turns out, the Israeli nuclear program goes back to the very inception of the Israeli state in 1948. So, of course, there was no shortage of uh, scientists, as a lot of Jewish scientists had been working in the uh, German uh, nuclear program during World War II. So, of course, they uh, emigrated to Israel, the new state of Israel, and uh, also the lessons of uh, the U.S. dropping nuclear bombs on Japan in 1945 it was very impressive. It left quite a quite an impression on these scientists, and they um, quickly realized, as did uh, governments and militaries all over the world, that uh, this was a game changer. And everybody wanted to get a piece of the pie. Certainly, um, Israel was no exception. By 1952, four years after the birth of Israel, they already created their own Israeli Atomic Energy Commission under the Department of Defense. So there's no question what the intention of Israel was from the beginning. Although, of course, just like everyone else, they claim we are building nuclear reactors for cheap, efficient energy and we have no interest in a weapons program. Although in Israel's case, it was quite easy to prove right from the beginning that they had every intention of getting a nuclear bomb and in fact this is documented. And then between uh, 1948 and 1962, France was the main supplier to Israel uh, for their nuclear program. They helped them build the nuclear reactor. Um, they brought in advisors. They helped set them up. And um, during this, uh, this time, South Africa, France, Norway, and West Germany all were involved in uh, supplying yellow cake and rich uranium. And, um, and, and then, of course, the other part of the story is that there was a lot of uranium and um, other nuclear components that were smuggled out of the United States by Israeli agents. So another layer of complexity in our uh, relationship with Israel. So, um, so this is where it gets interesting. Between 1948 and 1962, of course, uh, Israel claimed that they were building a reactor for, quote, peaceful purposes, unquote. So that should sound familiar. And another thing that should sound familiar is that the entire reason that France was helping Israel develop a nuclear program and nuclear weapons is to hope that Israel would counter Egypt. And France wanted Egypt preoccupied so that they could continue their war with Algeria. 
So once again, strange bedfellows in the name of some momentary foreign policy impulses. And um, another thing about this that should sound familiar is that uh, by 1960, the international community was getting a hint that uh, the Israelis were developing a nuclear weapons program. And of course, Israel refused to allow international inspections. And um, rather ironic. So now we know why Israel feels the way they do about Iran, because they assume Iran is probably going to go down the same road that Israel has been going down since 1948, not allowing inspections, insisting that there are uh, nuclear programs for peaceful purposes. But there is a nuclear program in Demona, and it has been there since 1948, and that is still the focal point for the Israeli nuclear program. And as yet, there has been no international inspections. So, uh, in fact, they have not Israel has not even publicly acknowledged that they have nuclear weapons. So, uh, so anyway, between 1963 and 1973, Israel uh, was on their own without France's help uh, to assemble their nuclear program. And by 1966, 1967, they had already developed their first two nuclear bombs. And in fact, they almost put them in use in the 1967 Yom in the 1967 war. And um, so there's a, a good example of Israel having nuclear weapons and the will to use them, and the will to use them um, fairly easily. And in fact, uh, they uh, had a nuclear alert once again in 1973 in the Yom Kippur War when Egypt and Syria attacked. And they had 13 bombs ready to go to be delivered. Um, in that war in 1973. So uh, once again, they showed that they have the weapons and the will to use them. And, um, and another uh, distinction that uh, Israel has is that in 1981, they, uh, they attacked a, a nuclear reactor being built in Iraq and uh, destroyed it. And uh, that was the world's first attack on a nuclear reactor. So another fine distinction there for the Israeli state. And, um, and that brings us up to, to now, more or less. Uh, by 1997, it is said that Israel possessed 400 deliverable thermonuclear and nuclear weapons. And um, so it begs the question, what, what exactly does uh, Israel fear when they have 400 deliverable thermonuclear weapons and nuclear, thermonuclear and nuclear weapons that they've had a nuclear program, an arms program, since 1948? And uh, as they have shown, they have the will to use these weapons. And in fact, uh, they've been developing more tactical um, micro nukes um, because they, uh, they want to use them on the battlefield in the Middle East should it come to that. So, uh, so there's a little uh, nutshell history of Israel's nuclear program. So we have an unprecedented moment here where the UN General Assembly has called on Israel to admit that they have a nuclear uh, energy program, a nuclear arms program, that they need to sign on to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, which incidentally Iran has, has signed up to, and they have to allow inspections of their nuclear weapons program, which is something, of course, they demand of Iran as well. So uh, a little bit of hypocrisy there, but uh, congratulations to the international community, congratulations to the United Nations. Um, that the world is finally waking up, that uh, there has to be some restraints put on Israel, and they cannot act with impunity in the future. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one, too.